All right, guys, I wanted to welcome you to another lesson. And today we're going to talk about compression. So I think compression is really overall misunderstood or maybe under understood. I think people don't really know exactly what compressors do to audio. And so today I'm going to try to clear that up. Hopefully after you watch this video, you'll have a much better idea of what's going on when you go to use a compressor. What is it doing to the audio? What kind of processing is it actually doing? How can we have control over the settings instead of using presets? How do we set it manually based on the signal material that we're passing through it? And also, what are the differences between different types of compression? So to start out, I'm here in Logic, and I think Logic has an amazing built-in compression plugin. But if you don't have Logic, that's fine too. Uh, I'm going to go over all the main parameters of compression, and this will apply to any compressor. Uh, this will even apply to hardware compressors, if you have access to one of those. In Logic, the compressor plugin is actually seven different compressors in one. So it's really cool. They've actually modeled kind of vintage and current designs uh, that are based off of hardware and they actually sound and respond differently depending on the model so it's not a gimmick they really they really did it and they also have different parameters depending on the model so first let's just go over that there's three main types of compressors that they're modeling here in logic. The first one is called a VCA and that stands for voltage controlled amplifier. VCA compressors can respond slowly or quickly to incoming transients. So what's a transient? Well the transient is the initial frequency of any sound. So when you record any sound it is going to create, it's going to be represented as a wave. And since we have digital recording technology now, we can actually see the waveforms that the audio produces when we record it. And so when you see a recorded, any recorded audio, the initial sound, the onset of the sound itself, there's going to be a positive peak as measured in decibels and it's going to go down to a negative peak. And that very first onset of the source itself, that is the transient. If you have a drum, let's say you have something like a snare drum, that's gonna have a very sharp transient. So it's gonna have a very loud attack and it's gonna have a short decay. So the transient will be the biggest part of the wave dynamically and then it will end quickly. So the dynamic range will go, let's say, from plus 12 dB to 0 dB, maybe in about a second or so. If you had something like an organ and you press the keys down, you would get that initial transient, but then an organ sustains. So as long as you held the keys, that wave would probably maintain a very similar amplitude as when you first hit the key. So different compressors respond differently to different material. And so that's why we want to learn about these and know what is the best one to use given the source that we're actually working with. So a VCA compressor can respond slowly or quickly to incoming transients. So that means it's, it's versatile. It can handle any type. 
They tend towards a clean tone and are well suited for bass guitars and other low frequency signals. VCA compressors can attenuate or amplify the signal. So that's good to know because often compressors are actually reducing amplitude. But we just learned that VCA compressors can also amplify signals. It is a voltage controlled amplifier after all. The next type of compressor is called an FET compressor, and that stands for Field Effect Transistor. And again, this is talking about in actual hardware where there would be a transistor in the input. It could be either in the input or in the output of the signal path, or maybe both. So FET compressors are known for their fast transient response. So that means they're going to be much more better suited to work with signals that are fast. So something like drums, something that's percussive, something that has a large transient and a short decay. You might want to try using an FET compressor. They can deliver a clean or colored tone, particularly in the mid-range, and can be pushed to a somewhat crunchy tone on transients. In my experience, FET compressors are the most colored type of compression. So what does that mean when we say that a compressor is colored? Well, it means that it's imparting some tone as well into the signal that you're processing. It's not just attenuating dynamics, it's also imparting tone into the signal. So that means it's changing how it sounds fundamentally. It's adding harmonics to your signal. And FET compressors often have this type of effect in the mid-range. They can actually add harmonics to your signal and make it more complex. You can actually alter the sound of your signal. And they can also distort in a pleasing way. So if you wanted to make something a little bit more aggressive, you know, again, let's say you're you're compressing drums and you want them to have a little bit more energy. You want them to be a little bit more aggressive. Well, you could add some distortion into the signal just using a compressor. The FET compressor is a great way to do that. FET compressors are ideal for drums, as I mentioned, vocals, guitars, and other signals with a fast attack phase. FET compressors can only attenuate the signal, so they are not amplifiers. All they do is reduce the dynamics. The last type of compressor that is modeled inside of Logic is called an opto compressor, and that stands for optical. So opto compressors are known for their fast transient response and nonlinear release handling. They are very clean and are ideal for vocals and guitars. They are also often used as limiting amplifiers across buses or outputs. So what that means is sometimes we don't want to alter the tone of what we are compressing. Sometimes we just want it to perform the actual function of a compressor, which is to attenuate amplitude. And amplitude, again, is just a fancy word for volume, right? If you want to simply attenuate a signal, if you want to kind of corral a signal that would otherwise be jumping around dynamically, which a lot of signals are when you record them. I would try using an opto compressor.